One, two, three, four. Whoa, now hold your horses. Why isn't anyone talking about the details? I'm talking about the details when you wanna keep your horses at home. When you're considering looking at equestrian property, there are certain questions that you need to ask that are outside the box of your typical single family home. Hey there, I'm Lindsay Vance, local realtor with Real Broker. And on today's episode of Living in South Carolina, I wanna go over some questions you need to consider when you're looking at equestrian property, specifically here in South Carolina. Now, some of these tips and questions might be helpful no matter where you decide to live, but I do highlight some specifics just about our area. So let's jump into it. Now, Aiken, South Carolina is definitely the best kept secret for equestrians. Actually, we're really well known for equestrian communities and subdivisions. Some of these have trails and other amenities like rings and clubhouses, but they do have restrictions and rules. So we'll wanna get into that too. Now on to our first question. When you have horses at home or really any type of animal, you wanna have acreage, typically two, three acres, all the way up to a hundred acres, whatever you wish. So how is that acreage fenced? Is it perimeter fenced all the way around? And what type of fencing? Sometimes you'll have a top board with wire that keeps outside animals from coming in and your little animals from getting out. So that's a great question to ask. How is the property fenced? Now this one, you'll definitely want to bring your boots because you have to plan your pasture space for your animals. Some properties already have that pasture space established. Some of them don't, and you'll have to do some clearing. Some things to keep in mind, if it's already cleared, you'll want to make sure it's done properly. That meaning that the stumps have been pulled, the roots are out, and all of that was cleared properly to avoid sinkholes later down the road. You don't want those big holes in your pasture for your animals or horses. Now, if it's not cleared, this is your time to plan where you want your pastures and what trees you want removed. Think about shade, where the sun is, and those types of questions. Now it's time to plan your pastures. Now going right along with pasture planning, you've got to look at your fencing. What is the age? What's the condition? Does it need any replacement? Do you need to add any fencing? You'll definitely want to make sure you get some quotes during that time when you're looking at the property so you can estimate that extra cost. On to our next question, water source. Typically when you're on acreage, you usually are on well water. So you'll want to ask, when was that well installed? What is the size of the well? And what does that well service? Is it part of the house, the barn, the irrigation? You'll definitely want to check those things out. I also recommend as part of your regular inspections for a farm, if you're on well water, is to get a well water test. That can test for different bacteria and other things that might be in your water that you'll need a filter for or just a simple well shock. Now, while we're on the topic of water and pasture planning, what about water to your pastures? The property that you're interested or looking at, does it have water source to those pastures? If it doesn't, what might that cost? This is something you'll definitely wanna consider because do you wanna carry big heavy buckets of water to and from your barn? I know that's hard work and I wouldn't want to. Now, farm life is definitely fun. It'll make you wanna get all the animals. So you'll wanna make sure you check the covenants and restrictions that are in place for any area that you wanna live in. There are horses big and small. So one thing you absolutely wanna make sure in your barn is to measure the stalls. You definitely don't wanna move your 17 hand horse into a tiny stall and realize it after you bought the property. Now this is a really important question to consider. What do you plan to do with the property? Are you gonna have borders? Are you gonna do training? Would you like to have any sort of rental income or commercial activity in general? This is another thing you'll wanna check out with your covenants and restrictions in the area that you wanna live in. This leads us to our next question. Are there riding trails in the area and where are they? 
This is something you'll want to check out, more specifically in those covenants and restrictions that you allow guests on those trails, or must they be accompanied by you, the homeowner? So check out the trail system and ask those types of questions. Let's go back to that water source because water is important when you have a farm. Whether you're looking to do some gardening or just need a water source for your grass, what type of irrigation system is in place? Talking about the sprinklers, how many zones are there? Where does it service? Because we do have sandy soil and establishing that grass and different vegetation is a little more difficult than other areas. It's farm life, which means shit happens. It happens. What shit? Okay, let's talk about manure removal. Here in Aiken County, it's pretty common to have a manure removal service. Yep, that means someone actually comes to your property and takes the manure away. Also, you have options to spread it around your property or trails in that area. But if you're in a specific subdivision, you'll wanna make sure spreading is allowed. We're obviously in the South. It is hot and humid, especially in our main summer months. So our animals need shelter or some sort of shade. Now, do those pastures have shelter in them? Does the shelter have electric? Does it have water? Can you put fans in there? You'll definitely wanna check out and make sure your animals have some sort of shade so that it can enjoy living outside in the summer months. This one goes right along with taxes. It's about farm insurance. It's not typically like your regular residential insurance. So you'll wanna make sure you get some quotes during your due diligence. It may be a little bit higher than normal, especially depending on what you plan to do with the property. Now here's our last question, but truly one of the most important. What amenities are available with the property or with the neighborhood? And really, what amenities do you absolutely need? If you need an arena or certain things like that, how much is it gonna cost to add that to your personal property? You'll wanna make sure to get different quotes for water, fencing, amenities, anything like that during your due diligence so you can work it into your budget. That was a ton of information to take notes on, but they're just a few questions to consider. Did you know that Aiken County actually has more than 22 subdivisions that are specifically equestrian friendly? Now, whether you wanna be in a subdivision or in more of a rural setting, we've got such a variety of horse friendly properties here in the area. I definitely know all about farm life. I was lucky enough to grow up on one and my first home had acreage where I was able to have my horse right there with me. But I actually wanna know, what questions did you consider when you were buying your equestrian property? Or if you don't have one, what questions are you curious about? I love being able to provide this information to my equestrian clients and viewers. I'm Lindsay Vance and look forward to seeing you next time on Living in South Carolina.